So you're ready to take the leap and purchase your very first LT Wright knife. First off, congratulations. But you're having a hard time deciding which one to go with. You're not alone. Believe me, I've been there myself. Well, in this video, I'm gonna help you decide which LT Wright knife suits your needs best. The crew over at LT Wright Handcrafted Knives is producing some of the best and most popular semi-custom knives on the market today. Their shop also produces exclusive knives for knife dealers and online bushcraft stores. You're going to have to look at the available knives page on LT Wright's website, link in the description box below, to see all of the designs available only through third-party vendors. Because I'm trying to keep this video relatively short, there's no way I'm going to go through my entire history of LT Wright knives. Just know that I've worked with and owned roughly 14 to 16 different knives over the past four years. That's like four knives a year, people. That's a lot. What do you want with a knife? First, you have to decide what you need the knife for. Are you a bushcrafter who likes carving wood and making shelters? Are you a hiker or a camper who needs a light knife that's easy to carry on your treks? Are you into survival and want something that can handle anything you throw at it? Or are you looking for your perfect one tool option or holy grail knife? Answering these questions will make the decision of which knife to buy a little bit easier. So let's jump right in. A knife with a blade that's under three inches, in my opinion, is a small knife. This is the Frontier Valley from LT Wright. So something small would be what you might call an EDC knife or maybe a companion knife. In other words, it's a small knife that you carry every single day or a small knife you can use in addition to a larger tool. In my opinion, a large knife has to have a blade that's over five inches long. My large knife from LT Wright is the Gary Wines Bushcraft Hunter. Some people are completely sold on the idea that your knife has to be over five inches in order to be a good survival knife. Now, if any of you have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I had a Sospes. This has replaced the Sospes. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit thinner, and it's a lot more comfortable to carry. Plus, I love the look of it. So, like, traditional looking, old frontier butcher knife or something like that. It's a fantastic blade. And if you want to see me beat on this knife and test it to its limit, check back in the near future. We're going to be doing a major survival challenge with this thing. What are you going to be using this large knife for? Are you going to be using it to replace an axe, trying to chop and split wood? Heavy duty, wood processing, if you are planning on doing some light feathering, maybe a little bit of carving or food prep. If you're going to be doing those sorts of tasks with your knife, then definitely go with a large knife. It's going to be more efficient, and easier to do those heavy duty tasks than a small knife or our next category, the medium knife. Now I'll just add, if you're really like needing a giant knife, maybe a machete is more your style. And if you need a machete, get the Overland machete. It's fantastic. A belt knife is somewhere in between those small and large knives. Perfect example is the LT Wright GNS. This is, in my opinion, and many others, the ideal size for a knife out in the woods. Actually, most of the knives LT Wright produces are in this size range, so we'll probably spend most of our time on this size. With that size, I can do almost anything a knife was designed to do. It actually forces me not to use the knife irresponsibly. In other words, when I'm processing trees for fire or shelter, I'm gonna be using my ax or my saw, not my knife, which means I'm gonna work more efficiently and probably safer too. Hopefully this gives you a basic idea on what length of knife that you should start looking at. Answer that question and we can move on to the next step. I think this is probably the topic that's debated almost as much as knife steel. So now you make the decision of whether or not you need a Scandi, Sabre, Flat, or Convex, because LT makes them all. Now here's my opinion, remember, it's just my opinion. When I go out to bushcraft, I'm either gonna choose a Scandi or a Convex. When I go camping and just need a general knife, I'm gonna either choose a flat grind or a saber grind. When I go out hunting, I'm gonna be carrying either a flat grind or a saber grind. When I need a hardcore survival knife, I'm gonna choose either a saber grind or a convex grind. Now in reality, you can do 
any task a knife is meant to do with any knife grind. It's just some grinds are designed more specifically to do specific tasks. So if you want your knife to be the most efficient at the task you're using it, get the right grind. Now that we've started narrowing down the focus, we've talked about how big you need your knife. We've talked about what kind of edge angle and grind you should think about. Now let's talk about steel. To be honest, this topic will probably be debated until we stop using steel for knives. LT Wright offers a handful of different steel choices on their knives. Some knives are only available in certain steels, and some knives are only available in certain steels from certain vendors. O1 tool steel seems to be the standard for most bushcrafters. It's a tool steel, and it will corrode, but it's easy to maintain in the field and easy to sharpen. Another popular one is A2 tool steel. Say that 10 times fast. A2 tool steel. 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 <laughs> A2 is another tool steel, so it will corrode over time, but it doesn't seem to be affected quite as quickly as O1 tool steel. LT uses AEBL for their stainless steel. I've never worked with it, but I hear it acts a lot like an O1 tool steel while being corrosion resistant. LT offers a few in D2 steel, and then there's everyone's favorite super steel, CPM3V. LT does make quite a few in CPM3V, but they're all available through third-party vendors. So make sure, again, you check the external links on their website. And if you're looking for more of a budget option, LT also makes a few in 1075 high carbon steel. These come pre-patinaed in-house so that it has more corrosion resistance. When deciding your steel choice, think about your environment. I live in a high desert. There's not a ton of humidity, which means I don't have to be too choosy about knife steel. But if you live near the coast or in a rainforest, then you should probably think about choosing a knife steel that can handle that environment better, like CPM3V, AEBL, or even A2. Normally, if you're going to be doing a lot of work with food, you're going to want something in a stainless steel. And if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy-duty work, you're probably going to want something in a tool steel. Well, I'm hoping this video helped you with your very difficult choice of which LT right knife to purchase. If it did, I'd really appreciate a like and a comment down below. <sighs> Avalanche. <laughs> comment down below of which knife you decided to purchase. There'll be some links in the description box below to where you can purchase your knives. Make sure to tell them Jude sent you. It'll help support the channel. And I'd love to see videos of you using your LT right knives. So if you do purchase one, comment with a link so I can watch it. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.